to citizen tonight and it's time for us now to have a conversation with different stakeholders on the one month of the social health authority the implementation of the program uh, that is towards universal health coverage i want to start by introducing my panel here i have hazel koitaba who is the director of the social health authority good evening good evening Dr. Richard Lesiampe is the Chief Executive Officer at the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga uh, Teaching and Referral Hospital. Good evening, Dr. Ari. Good evening. Rosaline Omolo is the Chief uh, CEC, the County Executive Committee member in charge of health in Homa Bay County. Good evening. Good evening. And uh, Principal Secretary at the Medical Services Department, Harry Kimtai. Good evening. Good evening, Sam. And of course, we have active audience here, members uh, from the contributors of the Social Health Authority of the Social Health Insurance Fund. We have beneficiaries, we have officials from the government, uh, both local and the national level. And basically, stakeholders who are also here to help us walk this journey to raise the questions. We can uh, have a clap for everyone else as we begin the conversation. <laughs> All right, and our, our task here is just to take a look at what has been happening the past one month. Let me begin with you, Principal Secretary, because um, we've been hearing you communicating, speaking about the progress that has been made in terms of uh, registration. But what did you say has been, uh, the, the journey has been like those 30 days? I want to say that uh, the journey, we started our journey with a lot of challenges initially. At the first two days, by the third day, the issues that we, we encountered had been resolved, and specifically because of uh, the system. Because uh, some of the patients who arrived at the facility where they had already been booked for their various uh, procedures, others were to face, uh, to go through the dialysis, others were supposed to go through the chemo. But there was a confusion uh, in terms of uh, when we communicated to the facility owners, and the service providers, I think uh, some of them did not take our instructions, did not take our communication seriously, and uh, they started uh, charging the patients up front where patients had already paid for their uh, NHIF and we informed the patients that uh, once you pay your NHIF, you will still be entitled to the benefits under the social health authority. So a little bit of confusion came up and immediately we noted that, we communicated to all the facilities and we were able to clear where the names or the, uh, the, the system will not recognize uh, the patient. Right. We told them to take note, uh, take our, uh, what's called uh, uh, records so that we come and update the records thereafter in terms from the system. Mm -hmm. So that was where we faced challenges, but thereafter our team worked very hard to make sure that the system stabilizes and after that, we've continued providing services smoothly. And I think uh, for the last uh, 30 days, we've seen a lot of uh, mm -hmm. improvement in our system and now patients are being treated without any challenge. Okay, and we'll get to the details about that. But Hazel, what has been your experience? Um, because starting uh, off on the 1st of October, there was still confusion about what SHA is, what SHIF is. Uh, what would you say that journey has been in explaining to, especially uh, the clients that you serve? Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, understandably, like any transition, there's always a few challenges. And the priority for the social health uh, authority at the time was to ensure that we protect the patient journey. So the patient journey entails ensuring that when they have to register, they're given the support they needed to register. Of course, on the 1st of October, there was that challenge where not all Kenyans were registered when they presented themselves uh, to access healthcare services. Uh, there was also the challenge of contributions. As we know, under the defunct NHIF, contributions had to be paid upfront before you could access uh, services. So ensuring that we were able to sensitize the public to ensure that uh, they knew that to access primary health care or the ECCIF, which is the Emergency Chronic and Critical Illness Fund, that they only needed to be registered without necessarily okay. being paid up. Oh. So, so it was an interesting journey, but uh, we have gotten there. All right, we'll speak about uh, the progress that we've made so far, but Rosalind, at the county level, because you're now having to, uh, at the policy level of, of the county government, you have to deal with the implementation of this and making sure that it succeeds. What has been the story? Uh, thank you, Sam. Um, again, 
as Hazel has said, it was, there was a bit of anxiety uh, in the very initial. Uh, remember, this is the most monumental um, migration we've ever had, I think, in the history of devolution. And um, post uh, the commencement date uh, that was gazetted in March when it was declared that 1st of October would be the, the transition date, right. there was a lot of uh, anxiety on our side. What would it look like? But for us as counties, the most important thing and the biggest priority was to offer seamlessness, in, uh, to, to, to observe seamlessness in service delivery. And so we, we, we picked on the most essential uh, services, and uh, these were continuity, not speaking just for Homabe, but for all the 47 counties. Continuity in critical services such as uh, chemotherapy, uh, talking about people who, are, who needed to have a dialysis, and of course, uh, mothers who are having babies. Right. So that was our priority, to ensure that services in the critical areas Okay. was not disrupted, okay. and um, I think we managed that pretty well. Dr. Lesi Ampe, so in the end, however we speak about a system, it is about serving the client. In your facility, you deal with some of these critical issues. You must have seen referrals from uh, hospitals that are lower than yours. What has that been like, especially having to attend to patients that were previously using NHIF. Some of them had no transitions in form of registration. What did you witness? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Sam. Yeah, as just been said, uh, there were technical issues uh, on the onset of the system uh, or on the transformation from uh, uh, NHIF to uh, SHA. Uh, that is you know, on, in the initial stages, the initial one week. However, uh, for our patients, particularly those critical patients who require chemotherapy, mm -hmm. we had a very, very smooth you know, uh, onboarding because we also got uh, clear instructions from SHA that uh, those services would not be disrupted because it was a matter of life and death. And therefore, uh, we indeed continued providing those services seamlessly right. you know, without any interruption. I think also in terms of uh, assisting our dialysis patients, uh, we are also capable you know, of uh, onboarding them uh, and transiting them into SHA, right. and we provided dialysis uh, for those patients. Uh, I, I think uh, one area that was a bit of a challenge was actually on the issue of early registration. I think uh, maybe the first two or three days, uh, there was a challenge in terms of uh, our patients getting regi uh, registered, uh, become members of SHA. Uh, but I, am, uh, I can actually confirm, you know, without uh, uh, fear of any contradiction, that at UTRH, and uh, in fact, the health workers of Kisumu County, we have done tremendously very well okay. that as uh, it stands this evening, that uh, Kisumu County is the fifth uh, uh, county that are registered the largest number of SHA members. In fact, uh, the top is Nairobi, followed by, I think, uh, Nakuru, Kiambu, Machakos, and we are the fifth. Uh, and therefore, this demonstrates that uh, we have done quite, uh, quite well. Right. You know, in terms of uh, getting into SHA. So tell me, when you said that you're transitioning them to SHA, what exactly did you do? One uh, is that uh, we had to register them, uh, and uh, the registration uh, required them to actually, you know, provide us, you know, uh, going through the digital system for them to present their names, you know, their identification, you know, and uh, through the system, you know, they were actually onboarded. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, two, uh, it was also important that uh, we get pre-authorization for them actually to access services. And uh, we indeed went through the pre-authorization uh, method. I can confirm to, to you, Sam, and I think uh, to the nation, that uh, unlike uh, NHIF, pre-authorization actually took two, three, four days. Right. But uh, with SHA, you know, it, was, it actually took three minutes, or at most four minutes, to pre-authorize any patient, you know, to access uh, medical services. Okay, oh, that, what services particularly? In fact, all services. One, for example, uh, I think majority of services. One, for chemo, it actually took three minutes to get pre-authorization. Uh, the same with dialysis. Similarly, for surgical operations. Indeed, what it meant is that uh, any patient who come to the hospital and is registered and onboarded on SHA, 
will automatically uh, be authorized to access medical so services. You, you, these are, um, for instance, chemo patients, um, or patients that require treatment by chemo. This that uh, it was taking three minutes to transit, to uh, attend to, are they patients that had already been benefiting under NHIF or their new patients? One, uh, it was easy uh, actually to deal with patients who are initially registered with the NHIF and therefore easy even to transit. Mm -hmm. However, it was also not difficult to know to register those who are new, you know, uh, and on board on SHA. Okay. And they all got similar services at the same time. Okay, yeah. so uh, uh, P.S. Uh, Kim Tai, help us here because the figure we hear today is about 13.5 million uh, people have been registered. Yeah. <clears throat> what exactly is that? Are these households or in contributors or principals? Uh, let me say this, that um, the figure that uh, you have given comprises of the former NHIF members, which totals up to nine million members who are transitioned mm -hmm. automatically. In the NHIF database, we had 12, over 12 million uh, members. But what we did is as we wanted to use the National Registration Bureau biometrics, we had to check and verify the NHIF data against the National Registration Bureau. Mm -hmm. So when we did that, we realized that there were about three million members of NHIF who could not be identified by the National Registration Bureau uh, uh, biometrics. So we dropped the three million and we took the nine million to SHA because that had been verified and we communicated to them. They were given information, messages, that now you have been migrated to right. SHA <clears throat> and then they were supposed to confirm their details. That took place. So, so Why just, did we do this? Just before we carry on. So 12 million members under NHF. Yes. These are principals and their dependents. Yes. And now 90... Actually, million. principals, not, not dependents. So these are contributors, yes. so to speak. Yes. How many contributors are you looking forward to onboarding? We are currently, what we are targeting is uh, we want to target uh, 12 million households which will give us a rough uh, figure of about 50 million uh, contributors or members of the social health authority. So in total, we are now targeting 50 million, if I'm um, to be precise, based on the household. P P yes, you can't have 50 million contributors because among them are children. No, those are must, they must be registered. That's what I'm saying for clarity. 12 million members of NHIF. Were those contributors or contributors plus their beneficiaries or dependents? Let me repeat again for uh, clear uh, for you. Number one, we had the NHIF members, those who are contributing. Yes. All right? Yes. Those are 12. Initially in their, in their database, what you were given is there were 12 million contributors. Mm -hmm. We used the biometrics of the National Registration Bureau to verify, because we've taken that to be our single source of truth now, because all of us have the identification cards. And with identification cards, we have our database there. Mm -hmm. So these are the ones that we made sure that since they were paid up members of NHIF, they were supposed to transition smooth without any challenge. That was done. So if, if I had to talk about the contributors of NHIF plus the beneficiaries, how many people are we talking about there? Let me just say this. The, you see, we are, right now we are having dependents that are being uh, onboarded as dependents, not contributors. All right? So 12 million, I'm just going to give you the number, why 13 million? Because we had 12 million initially in the NHIF database. And you remember NHIF used to go and collect the biometrics of their contributors. Mm -hmm. So we had to verify that to confirm that indeed these are the members of NHIF and we used the National Registration Bureau to okay. verify. Mm -hmm. So when we got the figure of 9 million, that we knew that for sure these are paid up members of NHIF and they, sh they, are, they should not be disrupted in terms of service delivery mm -hmm. because they have already paid up members. Since then, we have now registered about four million Kenyans. That gives us a figure of 13.5. Mm -hmm. 
So these are the already paid up registered members of Social Health Authority. So fresh registration, we have about 4.5. 4.5 million. 4 million. Yes. Hazel, on that question about uh, figures, so as you're transitioning, how many people in the NHF database in terms of contributors and uh, dependents? Okay, uh, thank you, Sam. So when we look at the NHIF database, we had a registered number of about 16. However, as the PS has said, there was a cleanup on that data and uh, eventually those who were verified as being members of NHIF were actually transitioned, which was about 9 million, um, 9 million Kenyans. The, the, okay, dependents? With dependents, uh, every household in Kenya, we're looking at an average of uh, three to four dependents. But and, uh, through this transition, we have transi uh, we've actually um, migrated the principal member of the household. So once that migration happens, then the principal member now declares their dependence through uh, star 147 hash. Sorry, but I, I'm not getting clarity. Um, because ideally, in medical insurance, if you have a household of two adults and three children, so if one person is the one that has bought the policy, let's assume it's the father, um, for no good reason really, but the father is contributing, then adds the spouse and the three children. Mm -hmm. So the principal member is one who is contributing. Mm -hmm. Then four dependents, meaning the three children and the spouse. For NHIF, how many were principal contributors and how many were dependents and what has happened to those? Uh, Sam, we have to look at the two acts separately. Under NHIF, um, actually registration or even contributions was voluntary. So it meant not all Kenyans were actually registered under NHIF. When we look at the Social Health Insurance Fund of 2023, we're now talking about mandatory registration and then contributions based on which of the three funds, which I'd mentioned earlier, you want to access. Right. So in that regard, whatever we had under the database of NHIF would mean maybe a mother, or rather a husband and the um, dependent, being the wife, were registered separately and contributing uh, separately. Under uh, Social Health Insurance Act, we're now talking about households. So households means that every member of the household will be registered. Right. So principal member then registers the uh, partner and subsequent children. And that is why PS is talking about eventually registering 50 million Kenyans. Okay. Um, PS, do you have something to, 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 let to me, add let, to that? Let me add this. Every adult Kenyan above the age of 18 must register. Mm -hmm. If you are married, your spouse, you register yourself, and your spouse must also register. And then you add your spouse as your dependent, and if your spouse is your cont contributor, then she also has to add you. Mm -hmm. So you must register. That is the principle that every Kenyan must register. The dependents come in the second phase, where now who is your dependent that you declare? and you add them into uh, so, the so, list. So, 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 if, so if, I yeah. use, if I use the data that we have in the current system, mm -hmm. in the current system, as of today, mm -hmm. we had over 600 dependents who had been added by their principals. Six, 600? Over 600,000. Okay. So, and we are, that's why we are, we are now uh, campaigning, to making, telling them that you must on both so, your so dependents. So, what was the problem? Because um, NHF, the dependents were registered. What was the, and you transitioned the principal contributors or the contributors. What was difficult to also transfer the dependents? What you are doing with the, checking the date of NHF, you are using uh, the biometrics of the National Registration Bureau. So, mm -hmm. it's only those who had registered, paid up, and they had biometrics been taken, and the same biometrics is what we are using to confirm and verify with the National Bi Bi 
Registration Bureau. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are using the figure of 12,000 being the principal 12 contributors. 12 million. So 12 million. The, the 12 million are adults? Yes, are adults. Okay, and we'll be getting to the audience to just hear what the experience has been with the registration process. Um, Rosalyn, help us. Uh, in um, Homa Bay, what have you done to at least help people understand uh, the process of registration? And what are you hearing, especially in terms of also adding the dependents? Uh, thank you, Sam. So um, the first thing that we did was um, to sensitize um, our people. As you know, Homa Bay is one of the counties that has 100% coverage of community health promoters. So we used our community health promoters who mm -hmm. ordinarily manage at least uh, 100 households, mm -hmm. uh, or some, some maybe manage uh, a little below that. So immediately we began, when the rollout uh, started on the 1st of October, we began the sensitization exercise. And so just the way our community health promoters ordinarily do house visits, so now the house visits have been augmented to include registration of households onto, onto um, the social health authority. And uh, this has also, been, uh, has also included sensitization. However, even at our facilities, uh, what we did is we t we've tried to discourage people mm -hmm. from going to the facilities to register, because that has also been a problem. Some of these issues where you hear people saying, we went to the hospital and were not assisted. A lot of Kenyans are assuming that registration happens at the facility. That is not the case. They're supposed to register online through 147 or any other means, so that you should only go to the hospital when you need uh, assistance. However, we've had cases of people who are getting uh, coming to the facilities for both for both registration and also to seek assistance and uh, we've experienced sometimes when we have uh, systems are slow mm -hmm. what we agreed as a county and as a policy and this direction that my office gave to our facility in charges is do not turn away anybody uh, because they've not registered register them uh, sorry because they, they are, their details are not reflecting because that was also a problem. So what we did is what the PS mentioned earlier, the manual uh, recording, and then when the system opens up, then they transfer. But we've done a lot of sensitization, mm -hmm. and uh, we've had a lot of uh, conversations. And also with assistance uh, from the Social Health Authority, the first two weeks, we used to have two sessions, two online sessions, of training for our facility in charges every day, one at 10 and the other one at uh, 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. And because our facilities are in the village, meaning the people who work in, the, in there live amongst the people, we've made it a clarion call that everybody has to ensure that on, a, on every single day you're speaking to people about registration. So for us, it's just been about sensitization, um, not so much about the benefits, but about the fact that you need to be registered right. to access services. Okay. Yeah. And, and Dr. Alessi Ampe, so in those 30 days of um, having to do this, you spoke about um, verifying or confirming that they are fully paid up members of SHA. What does that mean because the contribution is coming at the end of October? Okay, thank you, Sam. Uh, uh, the point here is that uh, registration is important. You know, unless you are registered, you cannot access uh, some of these uh, services. And uh, therefore, uh, for example, uh, the mothers who deliver at JOTRH, mm -hmm. you know, uh, from 1st of October to date, in fact, up to today, we have actually delivered uh, 400 mothers. And uh, those 400 mothers, we have actually registered them, you know, to be members of SHA. Mm -hmm. They used to be under Linda Mama, but now they are under SHA. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the system automatically registers them. And uh, as soon as they deliver, in fact, uh, within 48 hours, we discharge them, those who are okay, and we actually raise claims, you know, to share. And therefore, uh, it is expected that uh, after 30 days, and I think it was actually ending today, that uh, we will get reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And I want to confirm that uh, we got reimbursement, but I can't give you the figure now, but uh, we got some reimbursement, you know, for the mothers who delivered in the, in the, month, of, uh, in the month of October. Okay. Yeah, so uh, well, for what, other what services. Is, what is the rate of reimbursement? Uh, the rate of reimbursement, uh, and I think uh, this is very, very important, I think uh, to my colleagues, uh, CEOs of uh, hospitals and even the med soups, that uh, the NHIF uh, benefits were actually lower than the share benefits. 
during uh, the NHIF period, we had the leader mama where we were being reimbursed a rebate of 5,000 shillings per delivery. Now we are being reimbursed uh, 10,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And therefore, this cut us more of the uh, commodities that we require uh, to assist the mother to deliver. Similarly, uh, the same has also happened. The same has also happened to uh, patients who come for dialysis. Mm -hmm. Dialysis patients uh, during the NHIF period were actually getting reimbursed 8,000, uh, 9,500 shillings. And uh, now we are reimbursed uh, 10,600 shillings in no part for, the, for dialysis. In fact, uh, one very important uh, element uh, also in terms of uh, some of these chronic diseases, right. on the issue of dialysis, now there is an element of a, a kidney transplant, or even, I think, a bone marrow transplant, where now the government has also gone ahead to provide some resources through SHA for medication for those who go through transplants. This never used to exist before. Okay. Uh, and I think that is something that uh, you know is actually very important. And, and you've received this re reimbursement already? We have not received all of it, but at least we have re received some uh, disbursement. In fact, uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it was yesterday, uh, and we're also looking forward to receive other reimbursements, I think, after every 30 or 30 days. Okay, all right. We will continue this conversation, but remember we also have an active audience here that will be helping us to also give their experiences in as far as uh, what they have seen those 30 days. Many more questions to be asked, including um, the system that is supposed to be used in, in connecting hospitals across the country, what that looks like, and the shift contributions what has been your experience in the month of October? After, that, after the break, we have that conversation.